Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. We're all friends, we're here to have fun, but our story can include graphic violence, drug use, sexual content, and other mature themes. Content warnings can be found in the show notes. We talk at our table about safety, comfort, and consent, both as players and storytellers. We know what to expect, we're all excited to be here, and we want you to feel the same. So listener discretion is advised. Now, let's walk the path of night. Last time on Path of Night, Wind dug deep into her blood, sensing power and channeled the now awake Gangrel Antediluvian in an attempt to track weathers. She was gifted with the shape of three ravens, but the link to such a mad god threatened to consume Wind altogether. Wind used her bowered power to help find the torpid weathers and the cold wind that held him captive. The Coterie managed to rescue Weathers and brought him to the Domain Headquarters. There, they found that Fester had captured mortals for the Domain and that the Asimites had refused to keep them. Neil, Wynne, and Britta went to feed from and free the mortals, but their work was disrupted by what was Neil's mad ravings, or worse, his sire speaking through him. Neil's tone and his inflection is totally different while speaking to Fester right now. Yeah, Wynne knows Neil pretty well and has some empathy. Yeah, I would like some empathy into what's going on here. Yeah, yeah go for it. Does my spec and villains apply? It does. Uh, perception plus empathy. Difficulty? Seven. Because of my willpower, one success. Okay. Four successes. Okay. You, you've never seen him before and have always acted based on what Neil was able to perceive with his aspects whenever his sire would come around and force him to do things or be like terribly evil and hold him hostage, etc., etc. But this is the first time you now hear him. You hear Neil's sire. What you didn't expect was for his sire to be speaking to Neil through Neil's mouth. Britta's going to heighten her senses, specifically for sight, to see if she can catch a glimpse of anything else that's happening here. Wynn is going to use spirit tracking to see if there is, in fact, a third beast in this vicinity. As the two of you rouse your senses to, to investigate into the situation... You do not find any new information. When? Yeah, shit's fucked. Something's wrong. Neil Sire? Yeah. What's the play here? <sighs> I can't see him, and I've been working really hard on heightening that. I don't see another beast. Okay. What do you have on you? What do you mean? Do you have any weapons on you? I still have everything on me. Okay. Just taking everything into account. I reloaded. I was still in, you know, that mode after I shot that Samitsi and all. I don't think we have to come to blows here. I don't think we win if we come to blows here. The only thing I can think to try would be... Majesty, but that doesn't typically work on elders. Does it take blood to do? No. Do it anyway? Not yet. Bester looks at Neil, and when he realizes that the words he is saying cannot be heard, he looks on with absolute fright in his eyes and just turns and starts running. You hear this, this like this begging, please don't kill me, please don't kill me, and he's just running. Where does he run to? Uh, he turns and runs directly away from Neil. Does he run towards us? No, you guys are are be essentially behind Neil. Neil is okay. between you and Fester. So Fester is running the other way. It is quickly becoming apparent to you that no one told Neil to attack Fester. No one made Neil do that against his will. And it actually seems that all of the dark things that have been attributed to Neil Sire have been Neil. Or, perhaps, 
there was never a Neil, and that all along, the man who was blood-hunted and forced to leave New Haven for his monstrous behavior came back under the guise of his child. Which one is the case is not very clear right now. Britta, does it take blood to look at someone's aura? No, I'll try it. What does Neil's look like? I'm gonna spend another willpower. The difficulty is eight minus your aspects. Nine? No, ten with the willpower. Successes. So the first thing you notice is that his aura is, unsurprisingly, quite pale. Secondly, there is this hypnotic swirling of colors that is immensely distracting. So distracting. I need you to make a self-control check before we decide whether or not you get any more information. One success. Next, you see these colors that are normally not uh, with one another. They are mottled and kind of ripple and swirl and shift between another, one another. And you find wisps of orange and brown and lavender, shards of light green, gold and silver. There are these sudden flickers that seem to sparkle and sheen with the power of magic. And as you see this, there is this kind of static field to it. So, like, it kind of flickers to where, for a moment, you see no aura at all, and then it kind of shines again, and then it kind of flickers in and out. Now, at its edges, it is as though the aura has been shaped, whittled, and carved into a weapon. And in the depths of your mind, you feel it strike. I got to pull up some mechanics for a combination discipline that you are being hit with. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. As the halo that exists around him drives you mad. For one night, because you rolled so well, you will suffer from a derangement. For the remainder of the night, you are histrionic. The way this works... As histrionic disorders reflect the need for attention. Histrionic characters cannot stand being ignored and seek to be the center of attention in every situation. They inflate social relations, over-exaggerate injuries, and seek constant praise above anything else. For every scene, you do not wish to suffer active consequences for this effect. You must spend a point of willpower. At first, you see Britta examining Neil's aura the way that she normally might. And it, you know, she's looking a little lost. She's looking like there's quite a bit of art to it. But she pulls herself together and you see her focus narrow back in and her brow furrows. There's something confusing about the aura. Something extraordinarily detailed. It looks like she's trying to pull herself together to figure out how to describe it to you. Like... She's trying to make sense of it so that she can say something that would help this horrific situation. And then something lands. And when it lands, it lands hard. Personally. It lands like, like a gut-wrenching. Like everything has been pulled away from Breda. And she looks at you and she says, Oh, and I can't handle this. I'm so hungry. Okay. I can't, I can't do it. I, and I'm really hurting. I don't know what to tell you. Yes, it's colorful, but. Can you tell me if it's Neil or not? I don't know if Neil's aura is sharp like that, but I need to go feed. Okay. Um. When I can't help it, I was holding it together when we were trying to fight for weathers and I was holding it together, but I got I, boiled I and I just. I know. I'm trying to put together a plan. Give me a second. Let's. Okay, um, so Wynne just kind of makes a choice. She kind of takes Britta by the arm, leads her away from the truck, plants her some distance away from the truck. As you do that, Neil turns and slowly looks 
toward the two of you with absolute malevolence in his eyes. And he says, Do you not understand, Neo? These are sinners. And Gehenna has come as consequence to these sinners. And if humanity is to be free and shake off the parasites who have infected and fed on them for centuries, for eons, that reckoning must be led by us, by you. It's... Ganna isn't here because of sinners, sire. That's, that's, that's not why it's here. It's come for everyone, everything, no matter, no matter what. And in, in case you hadn't noticed, in case you hadn't looked around and seen everything that's going on, it's not just coming for kindred, for the get of Cain. It's coming for everyone. The ancients are rising and running around, k- k- killing, f- reclaiming the heart's blood for your own sake isn't helping anyone. You're deluded. Child, you are wrong again. Those ancients who rise do so because they are selfish, narcissistic monsters. And it is Hakim's way to see them obliterated so that mortals might bask in the light. You have a part to play. You have walked in the halls of heaven and learned to master both heaven and earth, not so that you can be some pawn for a sinful, weak-willed prince, but so that you might cut the infections that have been afflicted upon mankind. Carve it away. Look at them. Look at these humans and how they crave for the chance to cleanse the world. It's, it is, it's just, it's just hubris. It's arrogance to, to think that, that, that we, that I have, have any significant part to play in, in any of this. It's, it's, it's just, it's, it's chaos. It's all Chaos and any meaning that we carve out for ourselves is, is your path isn't any more valid than the, than the, than the rest of them. None of it matters, which means everything matters because we make our, our own meaning. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. Who, who, who are you to, to tell me what? I've I've seen it. You you know I've seen it. I've seen everything. And the more the time goes on, the more I think that Primogen Nix had a point. We are just here to see. You are meant for so much more. Perhaps you have seen reason to be a non-believer. But let me show you the reason to believe. Neil starts turning his head towards the police officers. No, when I think I can focus and wait. Okay, I need you to get... You have your bow and your arrows, right? Yep. Get one ready, because if this doesn't work, I need you to try and stake him. Britta absolutely docks an arrow right that second. Wynn shakes her head like she knows... This is an intensely bad idea. And she runs as fast as she can up to Neil, grabs him from behind and whispers, Neil, I, whatever this is, I love you. I know you're in there. I see you. I love you. Do I perceive her running at me? Like running up to me? Everything that she is describing, Neil perceives and is aware of. As far as you're aware, the guy that's talking is over he's, he's at the U-Haul. Right yeah. Yeah. He's just right there. Uh, as she is running up, Neil will just wave his arms like, Wynn, 
Win, no. J don't. Just, I need you. I need you and Britta away from him. I need you, God, please. Please just get away from him. Neil, I he's... I can't watch him do to you what he's going to do. Neil, look at me. Look at me. He... Walk towards me. He's just Walk. going to follow. I know, but I'm not going to let him take you on the joyride that he's looking at right now. What you think is happening and what I think are happening are two different things. You can't even see him. None of you have been able to the whole time. He I will do what him. he wants to do. And he... Neil? When I'm worried that I can't say no to him. I know. So say yes to me. And walk towards me. Lex, there's a mechanic on my sheet that has been there since the beginning that if I want to disagree with my sire for anything other than basically him killing me, I have to roll a contested manipulation expression against him. Correct? That is correct. I would like to propose, based on Erica's roleplay, uh, that she be rolling manipulation expression? It's basically win like two voices for Neil, or do you want me to still roll it? I actually think that's a great idea. Win, why don't you make a contested roll okay. using your manipulation plus uh, expression? Expression. Rob, why don't you roll nine dice? Hypothetically, I don't have any expression. Okay. I. Uh, Is that a penalty it, of any it's sort? A, it's a talent, okay. so no. Yep, you roll without penalty. I will be spending a willpower on this. Three successes. He got four nines. Okay. You say this, when, and in response, Nil says, Al Shahud, and the cops make this confused face. You make this confused face. Britta makes this confused face as the voice of madness goes off. Neil, I need you to roll. A voice of madness activation roll. Okay. Do my specs in either empathy emotions or manipulation fast talk apply? Yes. It is diff seven and I have five successes. So I'll be uh, affecting five different people. Affected victims immediately fly into a frenzy or a blind fear like Rotshack. Kindred can make a frenzy check or Rotshack track. Your choice at plus two difficulty to resist. Mortals are auto automatically affected and don't remember their actions while berserk. The frenzy lasts for a scene. The vampires can test to snap out of it as usual. And then I also have to make a frenzy or rush attack, but it is lower difficulty. So a few things. Britta, you do not have a dice pool for this roll as ah. your self-control rating is zero. When you are making a self-control roll at difficulty nine, three of the police officers already kind of hanging out with weapons in hand, will fly into a rampage. And I have to test for... Am I testing for Frenzy or Rotshrek? It's kind of what he wants, I guess. You are testing for Rotshrek. I did spend a willpower. Rolled a 10 and a 1, so that one success from the willpower is what I got. Okay. I am failing in Rotshrekking. We are going into rounds mm -hmm. when you are presented with a choice. Fuck. As to which combat we are entering. Okay. Are you entering a combat where in which Neil is chased and pursued and potentially caught? Or are you entering into a combat where the three officers that are trying to kill Britta face down with Britta who is trying to devour them? I have an important point of clarification that I just remembered. Neil does not succumb to Rot Shrek and run away because he is currently immune to dementation. Thank you, Primogen Nix. Mm -hmm. Now, it's still going to be looking like he's trying to run away, but I am not in Rot Shrek. When? What's the plan? Plan is a bit of a generous term for what she's considering. She knows what Neil wants. Neil, in this moment, wants to get away. But she knows what Neil really wants. And that is for them all to be together. 
And there's only a couple chances to make that happen. When reaches into her bag and takes out a steak as she looks Neil in the face. Neil, you have always wanted us to be together. No matter what, don't you dare break that now. Any hint of Neil's face that comes through looks deeply apologetic and terrified. And Lex, can my own voice come out in this moment? Absolutely. Okay. You, I, I need to get him away or none of us are going to get through. And he turns to run. When moves to stake him before he can run, but there is the movement of uniforms and the sheen of badges moving in the peripheral of her vision. And she realizes as she hears guns cocking and men yelling that if she goes, if she leaves to chase down her best friend who knows the parts of her that nobody else in this world does, who is facing demons the likes of which she cannot fathom. That Britta will commit atrocities from which her psyche may never recover, or she will be mowed down by bullets and fingernails and just the absolute brutality that is man. And... It is a gut-wrenching moment to have to flash think of the resources at hand. And at that moment, she realizes Britta has her. And Neil, for better or worse, has this elder psychopath in his brain who at least seems to need him alive. And alive buys time. And Wynn lets out a feral growl of frustration and rage. And she looks almost at Neil, but to the thing behind Neil's eyes. And she seems to speak to both when she says, I will find you. And she turns and begins charging toward the cops who are advancing on Britta and shoves the stake back in her bag. As Wynne turns away, Neil is having a very different experience of these events than everyone else right now. To him, there is physically a dangerous man right there threatening to kill everyone he loves. And as far as he is aware, just used dementation and the power of fractured minds to try and get them to tear themselves and each other apart. And even with that, something inside of him knows he can't say no to this man or else worse things will happen. But as Wynne says that, Neil, as he begins to run, to go with him, to lead him away, a bit of Neil's voice, actual voice, to win, ekes out. And he just says, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I really love... And then he disappears from all sight and sound. If Wynn heard it, she can't process it at the moment. She just needs to hold what's left of the things she loves together. Everyone, please roll initiative. Lex, are you including me in that? Yes, we will both be rolling initiative. 19. 16. 16. I rolled a 10. That's the max I can get is 16. You and your sire are both on 16. (laughs) The police are going on 12s. Britta, you're first. Wynn has seen Britta's psyche in a wide variety of states. 
She's seen it ripped away from her. She's seen it restored and she's seen it altered. Whatever cut deep into her earlier is buried beneath this new insanity as the beast rises up into frenzy. You can see Britta's pupils dilate. Everything about her seems sharper, more wild, more feral. All of her attempts at humanity, all of her attempts at understanding, the voices in her head that sometimes she even just copies from other people, all those voices just fade away. She strained into a hungry, wounded animal. She spent the willpower to suppress the derangement creeping up into her, but she doesn't have the blood to suppress the frenzy. And without blood, there is nothing to contain the beast. With all the speed of her unspent celerity, she takes off towards the nearest cop. Lex, I remember there being some dialogue earlier about these cops being toxic scumbags, checking to see if Wynn's attractive or not by their estimation. Yeah, I mean, these are specifically corrupt cops that yep. the... the Camarillo was able to use to its ends. Well, I'd like to speculate that there's probably some part of Britta recognizing if they gave you a sideways glance, recognizing that kind of awful. That's in line with her beast. So she goes to rip out a throat to bite whatever gets there first. Okay. Uh, why don't you go ahead and roll me a uh, dex plus brawl at half dice pool? Two successes. With two successes, you you grab him and bite right into his neck. Blood spurts up from his throat onto your face, your clothes, and you begin to very messily feed from him, gain three points of blood. There's that loud biting into an apple sound as your fangs dig deep. God damn it. Then three people go at the same time. So, Erica, what's Wynn want to do in this situation? Britta is going to kill this guy. If she stays attached to him, right? Yeah, she's not taking a sip, if that's yeah. what you mean. Yeah, no, that sound was when recognizing that Britta is not being careful. She doesn't care if this guy dies. Correction. Her beast is in control and doesn't care if this guy dies. She knows that when Britta comes out of this, she will be tortured with the idea that this guy has died because of her actions. It frankly relishes the chance to feed slash kill. There are three cops. There are three of the four cops that are flying into a rage. Okay. Fuck it. When will grab one of the cops and bite to feed? Okay. Give me a dex plus grapple. If you're trying to grab and feed in the same action, uh, you will have your dice pool to grapple. So dex brawl? Yes. Okay. Two successes. If my swift spec counts for dex. With two successes... You grab on and start feeding. Are you just going hard or like trying to kind of be delicate here? I am not trying to kill this guy. I want him. I want him sleeping on the ground. I do not want him dead. So you establish the kiss, mm -hmm. which overtakes him just as what happens to Britta's uh, victim. And you're going to feed. You're just taking your time to feed. I mean, I'm doing it with ex as much expediency as I can. But okay, so you're you're going to feed hard then and take three. Yep. Okay. And then I'll drop him on the ground and hope that he's too sleepy to get up. Okay. Neil, what are you looking to do here? I'm trying to get my sire away from Wynn and Britta. So I will be like ducking into alleys and fleeing down the street, hoping that he is like coming with me. Is he? So you back into the alley and are yeah. kind of like trying to coax him. I'm trying him to, to coax him to, co to get him to follow me and kind of still continuing the argument, knowing that if nothing else, motherfucker loves to be right. So I will just continue to sort of like debate him kind of about like this as I'm trying to like flee and just sort of coaxing him away from my friends. What do you say? I'm sorry. I've been... <laughs> Have <laughs> you stopped to consider at all that the path that you're walking is absolutely hypocritical if you stop and thought about it for just two seconds? 
two seconds. You know, I've been doing reading. I've been doing a lot of reading. And the things that you are claiming for Hakim's law, Hakim himself said he was the lawbringer for Cain. But doing what you're doing is turning against Cain's law. You see him for the first time in a bit cast a smile. I do have technically an action that I want to do, unless trying to coax him in with me counts as a whole action. Or rather, an action I am starting that I am hoping to cover. What action are you starting? As we are going away, he... The things that I have been reading in the Book of Nod about the laws of Cain have led me to understand the Path of the Jackal. And I am trying, over the course of the next several rounds, to quote the Book of Nod at him and cast Valediction. Solid. You begin your three rounds now. Yes. Okay. He will cast his gaze for just a moment towards Wynn. Wynn, what is your self-control rating? Three. For the next 11 years. What? I need to see your character sheet. Your perception, intelligence, and wits are all reduced to one. Okay. Jesus Christ. In addition to this, you gain the permanent derangement, regression, and mentally and emotionally, you have the very same personality you had as a child. Every bit of insecurity, every childlike wonder, all of it. The warrior, the killer in you has been assassinated. When, as she lets the body fall from her mouth, blood trickling down her chin, suddenly looks around like she's not quite sure what's happening anymore. Dad? Daddy? As the situation quickly escalates wildly out of control, the two police officers that are still up fire their weapons. Britta, uh, the first officer has two successes to hit you. Roll soak. Three successes. Uh, You soak the shot and suffer no damage as a result. Mm -hmm. Second shot is fired on Wynn, who hits with four successes. Seven successes. You suffer no damage from the gunshot. At the top of the next round is Britta. So then it sounds like I'm probably, what, taking another three blood? Or lashing out at the person that shot at you. I'll let you pick. If there's one that would take priority hunger or anger right now, I think it's hunger. Okay. So you will drain another three. Win. Win just got mentally raffle stomped. Nothing is making sense and she wants her parents and... I can't deal with this, but I have to deal with this, but I don't want to deal with this. But something in her nature that in the face of chaos, she knows she has to be reasonable, forces her to buckle down. And Lex, I'm spending my willpower to ignore this newfound arrangement. Understood. And I'm going to attempt to quell Britta. Okay, go for it. Uh, I will get in her way and like grab her chin as she's feeding and try and force her eyes to look at me. Britta, I need you now. I need your head on straight. Get it together. If I have ever needed you before, if you have ever heard me in this, hear me now, please. Give me a dex plus brawl. She's not going to turn to look on her own. No successes. Okay. She's quick and she avoids being grabbed. Neil. Neil continues to like flee back down the alley uh, away from the gunshots and the conflict, trying to draw his sire away. And in sort of like a a hurried, practiced manner, looks at his sire. I can see him, right? Like he's, is he following me? Yes. I pull him further away and sort of continuing the words that I was saying to him before, just go... Hear, hear the words of Cain, you hypocrite. And as they burned in hellbright fires, as they saw the melted flesh, as they burned with their own kindred, Cain blessed more funeral pyres, taking in his bloody sacrament. And that will be round two of reciting the Book of Nod. Understood. Neil, he focuses in on you for a moment. But 
nothing happens. And as if realizing something, his head tilts to the side. There's no look on Neil's face of like smug, haha, I got ya. It, it, he's just focused and hurt and reciting over and over. You must. You must see the light. And you will. And I will wait for whenever you are near those who you love, Neil. I am near. Whenever they think they are safe with you, they will be in danger. All your resistance does is make it harder. Embrace the truth. In Neil's head, because he knows sometimes his sire can read his thoughts before he even has them, underneath the recitation of the Book of Nod is just the thought in these final nights, all we have is our resistance. But he is not baited into ceasing his recitation. At the top of round three, it is Britta's turn. I think the cops didn't get their turn. That is very true. They will continue shooting. Britta is hit with one success. And has three bashing coming at her. Six successes. Okay. With six successes, you absorb all of the damage from the gunshot. Uh, It doesn't bleed. It's like little holes are being punched in you. The other officer fires on Wynn. And will miss her. At the start of the round, it is Britta. Options are retaliate or feed, right? In honesty, I just don't think that Britta's been given the prompt to stop feeding. If her beast is in control and she's not being hurt by these bullets, then I think she keeps feeding. Britta will take three more blood from this person, ensanguinating them almost completely. They go still in Britta's grasp. When it is your turn. I didn't declare it at the top of the round, but can I spend one blood for celerity? Sure. It will move you to after um, what's going on with Neil. Okay. So, Neil, it's round three. Neil uh, locks eyes with his sire uh, and just continues to recite with sort of fevered force. Seek not the blood of thine own elder. Seek not the blood of thy sire, sire. Seek not the blood that made thee kin, for thou will feel the funeral pyre when thou dost pay for thy immortal sin. And will complete the valediction. Will for valediction. I will lose a die because I am wounded, but I will spend a willpower on this. Five successes. As far as Neil is concerned, his sire is here. So he has been trying to impugn the the valediction of Cain, which against a kindred who has committed the sin of diablery forces their generation back to what it is supposed to be and rips all benefit from diablery away from the sinner. It would seem that your sire convulses, twists, and fades away as if concealed with a vanish from the mind's eye. Neil starts casting around, but even now can't quite keep the plaintive sire out of his voice. When? When we'll try once again to give Britta her mind back. Go for it. Britta, I know you hear me. I know this isn't you. I need you to hear me and come back. Four successes. That's four successes to grab her. Uh, roll the qual. Difficulty eight. 
Five successes. Britta, you may roll self-control. Is this something I'm able to spend a willpower on? Yes. Then I'll do so. Three successes. You pause, starting to reassert control of yourself. At the start of the new round, why don't you go ahead and give me another self-control roll? You need Uh, two more successes to be pulled completely out of it. I'd love to, but the cops could have to go first. And I get my celerity action. (laughs) Britta's missed. Win is hit. Go ahead and roll Sook. Two successes. You soak all of the damage. Mm-hmm. When it is your celerity action. I would like to take the dead cop from Britta. I don't know what kind of a role that is, but I would like, once she gets her head on straight, for her to not be holding him. So I don't know if that means taking control of a grapple away from her. Yeah, I'm going to say you're going to need to grapple her, and then okay. the subsequent actions you can take away what she's holding. Okay. Three successes. Okay, you grab a hold. The start of the new round, Breda, uh, you may spend a point of willpower to not take any actions and instead roll self-control. I will do so. Difficulty. Eight. One success. Okay, you are closer. Win. Uh, Win will take hold of the dead guy. Roll strength plus brawl against... Britta's strength plus brawl. For clarity's sake, we are we do not have the potent shot he gave us? That is correct. Two successes. Five successes. When you wrench the body out of uh, Britta's grasp. Britta's missed. When it's hit, give me a uh, soak roll. Nine successes. You are unfazed by the bullet. Breda, I need a self-control roll. Two successes, because of the willpower. Okay. You will come out of frenzy. When? As Breda has so aptly shown when in the past, when will huck the dead man at the live men and attempt to knock them down. So I do have a question about coming out of frenzy, which is... I spent earlier to suppress the derangement that I have for the night. I don't know if that spend is still in place or not. The suppression lasts for a scene. Dex brawl. Athletics. Four successes. That will hit with three dice rolling over into damage. Uh, Five damage. He is knocked unconscious. Uh, The last one turns to, to run. Are you guys giving chase or is combat ending? Wynn will let him go, and she will go over and feeding from an unconscious person. Do they still have their full blood pool, or is that going to cause damage? Why don't you roll me intelligence plus medicine? So I don't have medicine. Is it a knowledge? Yes. Okay. You're not sure. Wynn's going to err on the side of caution and leave it. She goes over to Britta. Britta is smeared in this man's blood. All over her face, she was not eating delicately. And as the realization is hitting of what she's done, uh, I'm Humanity 6. I know that we've done a lot of shit today. I'm not certain when we should be rolling that, but I'm pretty sure I just committed a murder. Yeah, you're going to have to roll conscience at difficulty 8. Am I able to spend willpower? No. Two successes. As coated as blood as Britta is, there's the flicker of the thought of, do I do I stop this cop? Do I, do I do what I have to do? Do I uphold the masquerade? Do I have to? But it's completely overwhelmed by this outpouring of horror and regret because Britta feels sated and she feels in control again. But most importantly, she knows what she did. She knows that she did it. She didn't have to do it. That she didn't have to kill him. And that there's no turning back. There might be just enough blood left in his body over there to, what, keep his skin pale? But that's a dead man. If not in this second, then the next. She tries to hold in the tears. Cry if you need to. I, with, we should, um, I don't think he should run. 
Something happened. I can't think really well right now. I'm still a little hungry. Can we check in the truck before we go back? When you're... Are you okay? No. Neil has fled. Fester has fled. The police situation is calming now that he's gone, as that one officer who is was not swayed by Neil tries to break things up and get control of the situation. We need to get Johnny. Wait, we're we're out here to feed. Oof. And Wynn kind of points back at the truck. Britta looks at the truck with hurt wide eyes and a little bit of revulsion, but you can see that there's so much blood spattered on her that she looks like she could eat. I Are you going to need help? I'm not as hungry as before. I wouldn't lose control, but there's still damage on me. When I don't know, I... Let's... I know I need to feed. I know we need to feed. I need Britta? to heal. What? Britta, I can't think. So I need you to try and keep it together. I want to make sure that these people have a chance. And I want to make sure that we have a chance. Okay, then let's go see how many. If we open the door, I don't know if they're going to be... A lot of them. First thing we gotta do is open the door. We can't do anything till we know how many there are. Britta goes over and checks the door. How are you checking it? First to see if it's locked. There's no locks on the back door. Then she'll probably open it a crack. So it's a bit heavy to open. You kind of mm-hmm. kind of pull the metal link open. And as you lift it, it makes that kind of noisy kind of truck sound. And in back, you find a dozen people. They have tape over their mouths. Most of them are unconscious. And they have zip-tied wrists, zip-tied feet, and are kind of all chained together. It would seem that as they were prepared, a lot of effort was put into kind of organizing them and having it so that they would have to make a very concerted effort to kind of move properly, but they're in the total dark and can't talk to each other. You see Britta falter in opening the door as she takes in what she's seeing. Just nausea running through her features as she realizes how convenient it is, and how horrible it is. Fucking hell. Um, I'm gonna close this and check the front for keys. Why? I don't... I guess for after. To do what after? Let them go. With the truck? I don't want to bring them in and... We're hungry, we need to heal. I'm sure there's plenty of people that are hungry in there too, but I'm afraid that they just get ripped to shreds. Yeah, I know, we're not going to bring them in, but I figure let's just untie them and let them out of the truck and go. We'll keep the truck. Oh, for sh- I don't care about the truck, sure. Okay. Um. My thought? We drink from every other one, we charge the ones that are still full with guiding the other ones. Like a buddy system thing. Like Neil always suggests and then conveniently ignores. I could turn on that sense of majesty about me so that we could be sure they'd listen. I yield to you. We should see if any are musicians. And see if there's a chance we can get the medicine into Miles. Yeah. So Britta will activate Majesty by spending one willpower. You see and likely feel the familiar heightening of everything that makes Britta Britta. 
the appeal, the charm, the beauty. It all gains power, and it all gains presence. Britta goes to open the truck again. Do you want me to do that? Thank you. Win will hoist up the truck door. So Britta tries to approach the first person gently. It feels gross. Stepping up onto the truck and sort of making small sounds so that it's not so startling that she's there. Hoping that the effect of majesty might make her presence seem a little more welcome. And knowing that she has far more control over what blood she needs because of what she had just done. That guilt sinking like a pit in her stomach as she goes to feed and take just a little from the first person. How much total are you taking? I currently have four levels of lethal damage. Is it one for one on lethal? It is. How many people are in the truck? Twelve. Then if we... The plan was... The plan was to feed from six. Six. Okay. My my thought was if we each... If we take two from each... Mm. Of the six, so you take six total, I take six total. That means that with only two traits lost from each of the ones that are losing any, they're still mobile enough to be able to walk. Uh, I'm good with that plan, and I would like to heal up the damage on me and then take the remaining two into my blood pool. Before Britta goes to feed, Wynne will tug on Britta's sleeve and mouth the word musicians and shrug like maybe we should ask about that. All the mortals here, Britta say, is, yeah. But in double talk, she says to Wynne, I was thinking after. But then someone might be overfed from or not have a buddy to get home. Britta considers this and then dips her head in agreement. She turns to this macabre assembly and she says, I think we have a way out of this safely, but, and I know it sounds strange. Is anyone here a musician? One person speaks up through through tape that's over their mouth. I hear you. One moment. And Britta looks at Wynne, and what the people hear her say is, All right, we'll get this figured out soon. And what she says to Win is, should we bring that one to Miles or keep that one here? Wynne nods and points to the one next to him as well so that that one still has a buddy when they're done. What the people here, Britta, say is, and we'll figure out the zip ties and everything. But what Wynne hears is, Are we sure that we should bring them close to Miles when he's so infected? Wynne just shrugs. Like she doesn't have an answer to that and doesn't have a better solution. But someone she cares about very, very much is sick and there's a way to get him help. But step one, we have a musician. Again, Britta thinks of something to say. Something that wouldn't strike the mortals odd. And what she says to Wynne is... You or me to drink less? Wynne raises her hand. Are you sure I just drank some? I'm not hurt. Okay. I think that we should, for now, leave those two in the truck. And then when we get Johnny, we'll talk to him about how we can get Miles fed without getting that person infected. Because because if that infection gets out to the mortal populace, it just it won't be just that one person we're hurting. Right. Wynne looks visibly upset with herself that she hadn't considered that and kind of holds her head in her hands. You're okay. I Well, you're not okay, but... I'm not, but... All right, let's, let's figure out how to get these people out. Yep. Um, Wynne will look for a way to undo the chains. You are physically strong enough that you could just... Snap them. Yeah. She does. Everyone, please stay calm. Stay still. We're getting you out of here as we can. She will also come around and in pairs, she will 
snap people's ankle bindings. So what we're going to do is that people are going to leave in twos, all right? Keep each other safe and just get away from here. Even in the dark, you can kind of see them like nodding and listening and ready to take the instructions you give in stride. And don't look back. Everything is really dangerous. Here, obviously, where you came from and probably where you're going. So, watch out for each other and find somewhere quiet. Um, I'm, I'm really sorry, but it'll take a little bit longer for you two. And she indicates the musician and that partner. Okay. And bit by bit, they release them in twos, and I imagine they take turns feeding on one of them. Okay. When I still really think we need to get Johnny as soon as possible, so I'll stay with these two. Make sure they're okay. You you go get Johnny. Okay. When will come out of the truck and look like she kind of forgot why she got out of the truck for a second and then see the building and head toward it. Coming inside, she will probably look through the window to see how Miles is doing. Miles, how you doing? Not good. Uh, being trapped in a room essentially almost like a test subject since it is uh visible to the outside is not a good feeling considering everything else that has happened so far <laughs> but he's dealing with it he's just kind of pacing and sometimes just sitting and staring off in the distance for a while when doesn't even know what to do she just looks at him with like he's an animal caught in a trap and closes her eyes to try and remember, right, finding Johnny. And she looks around and goes over to Johnny. Um, can you help? Well, you guys are back already. What do you need? Help. Um. All right. Can. He kind of looks at you, noticing that there's kind of just a weird look about you. He kind of reaches out, puts a hand on your shoulder. She lowers put... his head a little bit. You all right? She puts her hand on the hand on his sh on her shoulder. Um. No. All right. Neil's gone, and his sire was talking through him, and he was. I I think Neil was seeing something, and we couldn't see it, and then something happened, and people frenzied. Including the humans, and we found the truck, and we only drank from a few of them, but there's one Miles oh, can have. Okay, 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 okay. And uh, I can't think Wh anymore. Where's, where's Britta? She's she's out by the truck. And Neil is gone? Yeah. He, where's, where's Fester? He ran away. He was really scared. Right. Scared of Neil. Um, stay right here. Johnny walks over to where Miles is and knocks on the uh, door. Miles will come to the glass side and look at him through it since it's an open box. And What's going on? How badly do you need to feed right now? I'm not devastatingly hungry, but if we keep getting into combat, I'm going to need it. So I want you to make a no bullshit assessment. I might have someone you can feed from. Can you hold out? Or do I need to figure out how to get them in here for you? I can hold for now. And if we hold them somewhere else separately until we fix this other problem, we can do that afterwards. Provide them compensation or whatever. You know, tell them they're helping out with the, you know, uh, first aid or whatever it is. We can mess with the memory later. Jenny frowns a little bit at that. Keep them safe. Make it less traumatic for them. It's not unusual. All right. I'll see what I can do. All right. I know you can handle it. Goes back over to Wynn. 
You said Brit is outside with a musician? And a buddy so that the musician can get home safely after they're fed from. All right. Johnny, I can't think. Like... Like a, like, like a fog? It's... Did you ever get... Did you ever get beamed in the head really hard? Johnny cracks a smile. Like... I've, uh... I've been bean in the head of a couple of times. Like, before you were... Oh, yeah. And you know that, like, you could do stuff before, and you can't do it now. He kind of goes back to frowning. Like a concussion? Yeah, but I didn't get hit. Fucking vampires coming down with the plague, getting concussions. I don't know what the fuck is going on these nights. Um, Wednesday right here. Aisha. She rushes over. Seneschal. I'm not sure what happened to Wynn here, but if you could take a look and, and, t- and give me your opinion, I'm going to go outside to, to get Britta. I'll be right back. Of course. He said a word. What was the word? And who said it? I'm sorry. It was the voice inside Neil that isn't Neil. I think it was, I think it was Arabic. I didn't understand what it meant, but he said it and then... The world went crazy, and then, and then he did something to my brain. With your permission, I can reach into your mind and see the moment that you're referring to. It might give me insights into exactly what took place. Johnny, is that a good idea? Johnny has already headed outside. Oh, you're his... Respectfully, you are the only one who can give me permission. I can't think anymore. That's, I give you permission. You kind of feel this like reaching and prodding sensation in your mind as she feels for the events that led you to this moment. And her eyes narrow very slightly. I know that voice. A fanatic of the loyalists. Neil's sire was kind of like that, I think. He always talked about him wanting to... It's why Neil was so against Diablery, because his sire really wants him to do it. This man was a staunch supporter of the movement towards a more aggressive agenda, what ultimately led to the great deal of support Urshulgi enjoyed when he awoke. But... He himself. I thought he was destroyed a long time ago. Why is Neil... Why... I don't I don't completely understand. Is this Neil pretending to be him? Is this him pretending to have been Neil? I think they're two different people, but they're definitely in a same body. Hmm, she I, I don't know. Mal- Malkavian's... Malkavians know each other differently, Neil said. I'm going to find Nara. I believe she would know what to do and may be able to help you. Um, I'm going to find a place to sit and we'll project. Do you need me to watch you? I think so long as this place is secure, I am safe. But... My brothers and sisters of my clan, they can watch me directly so that you may do your work. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do right now. There's like another frown. I think for now we must tend to his grace. He will know what to do. Okay. There's this little nod she gives you, kind of... You kind of get the impression she's hiding some concern for your situation. And quickly she excuses herself, not 20 yards away. And she finds this like waiting room seat, tilts her head back and looks like she is falling asleep. But you've seen Neil do this before. She is mm-hmm. clearly leaving her body and going off in search of help. When will... She may have gotten dumbified, but she's still not stupid. She makes sure that someone is at least aware of the fact that she's doing this. One of the other Asimites. 
Um, One of the warriors who kind of approached her shakes his head. <sighs> the owls are known for this. It's very annoying. <laughs> and he heads over and he just literally just sits on the armrest of the cheat of the chair she's on, almost like literally like hovering over her and just crosses his arms and waits for her to start moving again. I have one like that too. Mm-hmm. Nods. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then when knowing that Aisha is under watchful eyes, we'll go over to the door where Miles is being recused. Wynn will kind of look to see what Miles is doing. Uh, Miles doesn't stop watching whatever's going on in there. So when you're go- coming over, he's still standing in like the same windowed area, kind of somewhat watching what was going on over there. What happened out there? Bad stuff. All right. We might have broken the masquerade a little bit, but I don't know. I I feel like that's being done a lot by other people. Um, well, we can possibly recover later. Um, we lost Neil again. To what? Him. We lost Neil to Neil? I think so. He, his sire's voice was there. I don't know how there his sire was. Neil seemed to see him or saw something that scared him as much as that did. Nope. I mean, it's the same sire that he's been seeing that no one else has ever seen. Unsettling, but not unsurprising. Um, Fester ran away. Do we need him back? I don't know. Um, and then that sire's voice did something to me and I can't think anymore. I know the feeling. Not quite the thinking part, but... I just... I don't know what to do, so Aisha said we should look after you, so I'm here to look after you. I do need a lot of looking after. Tell me about it. Mm, That joke did not land the way I wanted it to land. (laughs) I'm not sorry. Uh, It's okay. Um, Yeah. We did... Find a musician. So well, that's good. That'll keep us in the fight. Well, maybe we can put medicine in it. Them? I don't... I mean, we can try. I don't see why not. But I just... I don't feel like the answer to our supernatural plague problem is modern medicine, but... I mean... Is it modern medicine if we're feeding medicine to a person and having you drink the person's blood? Look, I... I'll do it. I'm not saying I won't, but... <laughs> Feels pretty actually like Black Plague stuff. Okay, yeah, I just... We, we should do our best to make sure he doesn't die from whatever this is, or they shouldn't die. Regardless, uh, I mean, you guys did the best you could with a ever weirder situation. You think this is recoverable? You think it's going to wear off? Is what? Whatever hits you. I don't know. This isn't triggering any of my new occult stuff. No. Okay. Nope, this is just fucking weird. Got it. (laughs) I mean, it's always been weird to me that that Neil Sire was such a hardcore Asimite, even though he's a Malkavian. I mean, people... It feels like people never see the Malkavians coming. They never know to be afraid of them. Um... Some of the point. We're all predators in different ways. Why don't you grab a chair and relax? At least until we figure out the next step. I could probably do that. See if you can recover a little bit. I'm not hurt. I mean, you are. Johnny heads out the front doors of the courthouse, down the steps towards the road, where he understands... Britta and Wynn had found the truck. He can spot Britta, Radiant, and Her Majesty, sitting with the two that are still blindfolded and bound. He takes kind of a a look around, notices all of the fucking damage that had been caused by uh, the total insanity from earlier, and comes jogging up to the truck. He comes jogging up, and Britta spots him. She, She seems to pass a quick apology off, gets up, walks out of earshot from the two. She is coated in blood. Johnny kind of uh, gives her a very respectful nod and smile 
Johnny, I'm sorry. Things went really bad. Um, if, uh, if it's all the same to you, Britta, would you mind, um, relaxing yourself a little bit? I kind of don't want to turn it off just for their... I don't want to scare them. Of course, of course, of course. I know, I know, and I'm sorry. I know it's not great, but... Mm -hmm. Um, I'll try and turn it off as soon as possible once we get them handled. Okay, let me just run through this really quickly. We came out. Fester was in the truck. Neil had this weird porn, like... Like, it was a bad idea for Wynn to talk to Fester. And he went to talk to Fester himself, and... Fester ran away, and... Neil had this awful voice coming from him, and it kind of felt like it was his sire. And we tried to look into it, and and I ended up looking at his aura, and it, it cut me like a knife. It's not it's not like the dragon hurt me. It's something else. It feels like altering. But it was weird. Neil was like talking to himself as a different person, and then things went even worse. And one of the police ran off because they saw. It. What happened after, um... Johnny puts a hand up. Um, I'm sorry to interject here, if I may. Uh, yeah? I understand that all of this is very important, and I'd like to hear more about it. His eyes kind of dart back and forth. This is not the safest spot for us to be hanging out, especially with a pair of mortals. Okay, so let's get to the parts that are actionable, then? Yes, please. All right, one of the policemen ran off because he saw me attack a bunch of the others. It's a big masquerade breach, and I'm really sorry. Um, and the others might be upset, too. The masquerade is paper thin everywhere. A slight altercation with police who are in the pocket of the domain is not going to be a serious issue tonight, Britta. Well, it might be if that helps fracture them because they're defending this place. Just something to keep in mind and something to work on if, if we can't fix the masquerade breach. Of course, you're, you're right, you're right. The other thing is, in the truck, there's two people. One is a musician, one isn't. Um, but I don't want Miles to get that person infected. I understand. Because if that person gets infected and then they're released, then everyone's infected. I understand. Okay. Those are the things that are most actionable right now, apart from not knowing where Neil is or what's up with him. Again, re respectfully, is there any way that you can relax in this moment? Um, I, I just would want to do it after we've handled whatever with the mortals. Do you uh, know what you want to do there? I, I do. I, if, if you will allow, I'd like to speak to them. Okay, do you want me to leave so that I'm not so overbearing? I would appreciate that, yes. Okay. Thank you. And Britta mm. goes and walks a steady distance until she can see uh, some change in Johnny's posture that might indicate that he's uh, not being so deferent. I don't think deferring. you notice a change in his, uh, in his posture. Mm. But Johnny internally leaves a kind of a, a sigh of relief when she has gone from his presence. <sighs> he... Steps over to where uh, the mortals are at the back of the U-Haul and pops a Morley in his mouth. How are the two of you tonight? They look at you wide-eyed. Um, we're, we're okay, sir. You don't have to call me, sir. My name is Johnny. Okay, okay, Johnny. I'm going to be very honest with you. Tonight and the next few coming nights are going to be terrible. They start crying. It's, this is, uh, I don't know where a good place is. I know the entirety of the Northeast is going to be in shambles. I know that, that there are disasters happening everywhere. Power has gone out on the entire eastern seaboard. Cell phones are down. There's likely going to be a state of emergency, perhaps even martial law, declared in places. I am not keeping either of you against your will. You are free to go. But if you are either of you are interested, I would like to uh, offer you a job and potentially some modicum of safety 
in these uncertain nights. What do we have to do? You have to be on call for my associates. You'll stay with us at the courthouse. I will keep you in a reasonably safe area, as safe as I can make it. But again, these nights are going to be terrible for everyone. If you help us with this, I will ensure that no harm comes to you, to the best of my ability. And I am willing to pay you for your time and services. Then whatever you want us to do, Johnny, we'll do. I appreciate that. I, th- I really do. I will make sure the compensation is life-changing for the both of you. I understand you're putting a lot of faith and trust in me with this. Someone that you've only met. Th- uh, thank you. <laughs> if you'll come with me right this way. Okay, and they kind of like get up and they're visibly trembling, but do follow you. With Johnny's speech and demeanor, he is going to extend a spree to court of them. It is no expenditure on my part. They do not gain any levels of potence, but they will gain um, a modicum of resistance to being intimidated or terrified. You instill them with some confidence and... It starts to show in the way that they walk as they accompany you. Johnny heads back over to where Britta is. He flashes her a very placating smile. These two gentlemen have agreed to work with us for the evening, and they will be on call with us in the offices. I've uh, informed them that if they provide us these services, we will extend to them every bit of safety we can. And after these nights have passed, we'll make sure that they are provided with Ample compensation. They uh, resist the urge to grovel as best they can, but say to Britta, uh, yeah, any, anything you want. Thank you both very much. Thank you, Johnny. Of course. Is it okay for us to proceed? I believe it is. Britta will drop her majesty. You see a distinct change in Johnny's posture, posture as, as the... Majesty lifts, and although he tries to hide it, you distinctly see an angry wave kind of like pass his eyes as he kind of glares at you for a moment, and then he shakes that past and just kind of nods and starts heading back towards the courthouse. Britta looks confused and hurt. She follows you in. For a while, there's some peace and quiet. Uh, The group is able to just relax as best they can in this scenario for about an hour and a half. And it's around then that a couple of the Bruja in the area can be seen pulling guns and go running for the entrance as some sort of commotion there starts. Path of Night is a Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. Britta Ashcroft, the Toreador, was played by Rebecca Segelfest. Johnny Saxon, the Bruja, was played by Garrett Gabby. Miles Davenport, the Venture, was played by Tim Davis. Neil Foster, the Malkavian, was played by Rob Meerhead. Wynn Cabot, the Gangrel, was played by Erica Webb. Your storyteller was Lex Lopez. Recording by Rebecca Stagelfest. This episode edited by Rob Meerhead. The music used in this episode was composed for Path of Night by Brian Metolius. Find him online at brianmetolius.com. Path of Night uses the 20th anniversary edition of Vampire the Masquerade with a few limited house rules. Vampire the Masquerade and the World of Darkness are owned by Paradox Interactive. Make sure to subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. We can be found on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Path of Night. You can help support the show on coffee.com slash Path of Night. Find us on twitter.com slash Path of Night Pod, on facebook.com slash Path of Night Podcasts, or email us at Path of Night Podcasts at gmail.com. See you next time, Kindred. Hey, Lex. Do you feel as though, as much as I want to spend on, like, abilities and stuff, that I have now maybe justified buying back to Humanity 6? Yes. Cool. I'm going to buy back up to Humanity 6. Mm -hmm. Good shit. Love that.